One of the mysteries of JavaScript is the value that is assigned to the keyword this and how that can change as a result of callback issues. Call and apply are two methods that help mitigate this problem. In this tutorial, we will look at callback issues and call and apply. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. This tutorial builds on two previous tutorials where we went through the process of creating a JavaScript tooltip. I will include links to the previous tutorials in the description section of this video. As a part of the second tutorial, we encountered an issue caused by callbacks. Let's first take a look at the issue and then we'll discuss call and apply. So here's our tooltip application. It simply displays a tooltip as we mouse over these individual li tags. Now jumping to the code, down in the tooltips element.foreach statement, this is where we encountered an issue. And it had to do with the keyword this. When we added the set timeout functionality to delay when the tooltip displayed, when we added that, it made it so that the keyword this that we're passing to display tooltip no longer registered properly. Let's go ahead and look at that. In the display tooltip function, I have a console.log statement for the object that is passed in. When we refresh, now that is no longer working. And if I open the console, we can see that the object that is dis being displayed is window as opposed to the li tag. That's what it should display. And then, of course, we get an error because it cannot find the data attribute on the window object. It can if we send it the li element. So that is the issue we encountered. And the way we solved that was using a, a trick that's been used for some time in JavaScript. And that is we simply assign the value of this to a variable. And then we pass that variable. Th this is a unique keyword. And this can change. And that's why using this technique where we assign it to a variable works, because the variable will remain the same. Now, this is established at runtime when a function is invoked. And so this is established when this function is invoked. This is established again when this function is invoked. And so that's why it's changing, because this is established when a function is invoked. And it's determined by how that function is invoked. And that little bit of information is how we're going to solve this problem using call and apply. Because call and apply allow us to invoke a function in a different way. So instead of it simply being called as a result of the set timeout features time expiring, we're going to call it or invoke it using the call method. Now, before we do that, let's just give a quick overview of call and apply. Now, as I mentioned, normally the value of the keyword this is set by how the function is invoked. Now, call and apply, they invoke a function while allowing you to establish the value of this. So you get to decide what the value of this is. That is the advantage of call and apply. Well, what is the difference between call and apply then, since they both provide that advantage? Well, the difference has to do with how you pass arguments to the function you are invoking. So with call, you pass the arguments to the function you're invoking as you normally would. You just include those arguments after the object. So the first thing you pass to call is the object that will become the value of this. Then the second, third, fourth, and so on are the arguments applies the same way. The first thing you pass is the object that will become the value of this. And then you pass the arguments as an array. So that is the difference. Apply takes arguments as an array. 
call takes the arguments as you normally would pass them into a function. So let's look at how we would use call because it applies best to this situation. How we'd use call to solve the same problem. So I'm going to comment out this line, this little trick. And then when this function should be invoked, I'm actually going to invoke it with call. So I'm going to do a dot call. So call and apply are methods that are a part of functions. And so I do dot call. And now remember, the first thing we pass in is the value that is going to be assigned to the keyword this. And so I'm going to send an lm because this is the object I want assigned to the keyword this. And then the second thing we will pass is the event object. I can get rid of the rest of this. And so that's how we pass it in. Now, since we have changed the arguments that we're passing into display tooltip, we need to come back up here and make a fix to that. Now, all we need to do with display tooltip is remove the second argument. Yes, with the call method, I am passing two arguments, but one is the value of this. And so that doesn't actually get sent as an argument when the function is invoked. That is simply used to set the value of this. Only everything beyond the object that we're passing for the value of this is included as an argument being passed into the function. So we really only have one thing being passed into the function, and that's the event object. And so now that's OK. Now we need to change our reference to the object. Now we can use this to reference that, because the value of this is going to be that li tag. So if we go ahead and save that, and refresh. Let's go back to the page that this is established on. And now let's try this out. So we can see that it's still working. And if we open up the console, we can see that it refers to the li objects. That's what that console.log statement is showing us. So call solves that same problem without having to declare another variable and assigning this to that variable. That works just great. Now, before we finish this up, I mentioned we're talking about callback issues. And I wanted to show one more thing. This particular part of the program is beginning to get a little bit difficult to understand. And the reason is because we have so many callbacks. For example, in for each, we have a callback. And then we get to the event listener, and we have another callback. And then we get to the set timeout, and there's another callback. This is sometimes referred to as callback hell. And there are ways in JavaScript, better ways now to deal with that. Ways of doing asynchronous programming in JavaScript that allows us to, do, to make this so it's not so difficult to read. However, there are very simple ways to make it so it's not difficult to read as well. And that's what I want to show you, just a simple technique. Usually what I try to do is not have more than one nested callback. So I'll have the one callback, and then I'm OK with another nested callback. But that's all. And here we have three nested callbacks. And by the way, if you want to refresh yourself on callbacks, I'll include a link to a tutorial on callbacks in the description section as well. So here's the simple trick for dealing with this. I'm going to remove all of this completely. Just going to cut that. And I'm going to create another function. I'm going to call it bind events. Set that equal to and paste this in. So now this function has one callback, two nested callbacks. So there's no longer three. And now what we do down here in our for each is we simply put the variable that contains the function. For each, by default, is expecting a function to be passed in that it will invoke. 
And so we're passing this in. It will invoke that function. So let's go ahead and save that. Refresh. And sure enough, things are still working. Okay. So that is just a simple way without getting into all of the asynchronous stuff that's now available in JavaScript that helps clean these things up. That is a simple way to deal with the callback mess that can happen when you're nesting a lot of callbacks. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I look forward to any comments which you have. To continue learning, here are some suggestions. Click the video link in the center of the screen to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed already, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you're ready to dive into full courses, you can click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.